Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. How many times you heard that old dog sung over and over again? Just about the time that old thing is about ready to die off, some young trio comes along and changes the course of history with it. But they got the story all wrong. Tom Dooley never killed nobody, and I should know. Oh, but I get ahead of myself here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Annie Foster Milton, and I was Tom Dooley's one true love. Oh, Tom and I, we, we grew up there on Wilkes Mountain together. Oh, he was so handsome and tall. And I, I taught him, I, I taught him how to read and, and do ciphering. I even taught him how, how to do some writing, though, although he never was very good at that. And, and as for myself, well, they used to say that I was the prettiest girl there on Wilkes Mountain. So, of course, they all expected that Tommy and I were going to get married. Now, I was a couple years older than Tommy, so I had to wait for him to come of age and everything. And just about the time we were ready to get married, why, why that war started. Those Yankees coming in, taking our land, taking our way of life. All of our boys signed up for the rebel cause right away, including Tom's two older brothers. Well, Tommy said he wanted to to join also. And I, I said, Tommy, you're only 16. But he was so tall, over six foot, why, they didn't even know, didn't even ask for his birth certificate. And I said, Tommy, you, you can't kill nobody. And he said, oh, Annie, I don't have to kill nobody. You see, I'm a musician, and I, I'm going to lead all rebel cause right over that line, and I'm going to be playing a drum. I'll be fine, Annie. Now, we thought when our boys were gone, they'd be back in two or three weeks. They were going to whip them Yankees and be back home. But it wasn't two weeks, and it wasn't a couple of months. It was, it was a couple of years he was gone. And it was during that time that my mama... My mama, she was after me, and she kept on saying things like, girl, you better get yourself married. You're 21 years old now. You're not getting any younger. You better get your picking while the picking's good. And I said, mama, I I I'm waiting for Tom Dooley. Oh, she said, Tom Dooley is a ne'er-do-well. No, you do yourself good to marry that James Milton. James Milton, I said. James Milton is an old man. Why, he's 35 years old. But he did have property, and he did have a nice house. And my mama kept after me and kept after me till, well, I settled and I, I married James Milton. And then, and then we see, received word that the Dooley boys were killed in the Battle of Petersburg. I thought my heart was going to shatter into about a, a thousand pieces. I, I couldn't even get up out of bed. Just about the time I started gathering up those pieces, why, who comes marching into town but Tommy Dooley? Oh, I ran up to him. I put my arms around him. I said, Tommy, Tommy, we thought you died. And he said, oh, Annie, my two brothers, they were killed. But I'm okay. You see, those Yankees, they, they wouldn't shoot at me because I was unarmed. And they, they put me into jail. And that's why I couldn't write. It was then I had to tell Tommy that I, I got married. But I said, nothing's changed, Tommy. We can, we can just keep on right where we left off. And he liked that we could. <laughs> well, James and I really didn't have much of a marriage. I mean, we had separate bedrooms, for heaven's sakes. But I, I began to notice that as Tommy got back, he, he was changed. For one thing, I started hearing some rumors around town that 
he was having an eye for other women. I even had heard a, a little bit of a rumor that he was going to run off and get married with one of them young'uns. Well, I didn't believe a word of it. Then I, then I heard another rumor that Tommy was playing in the old barn on Saturday night, playing the fiddle, playing the banjo. Now, everybody knows if there was ever an instrument of the devil, it was the banjo and the fiddle. <laughs> so I was just going to have to go see for myself. So I waited there in the shadows, and I saw my Tommy take that stage. Oh, he looked so handsome, and he put that fiddle under his chin, and he started playing, and I could feel that music. I could feel that music in my and then I looked at Tommy, and I could see that he was making eyes with some of the women folk out there, and one girl in particular. Why, he's looking over at Lori Foster, my own cousin. And it was then that I, I started putting two and two together. Tommy goes up north, coming home, playing the devil's instruments having the women fall all over him, surviving the battle of Petersburg, for heaven's sake, coming home a hero. Why, he had made a pact with the devil. That's what he'd done. And he had asked for fame. Well, I thought, what's good for the gander is good for the goose. So I made my way up to the top of Devil's Pond. And I looked out and I said, if you can hear me out there, you can take anything. You can take my soul if you want. But I want Tom Dooley to declare his undying love. And then there was a cold wind that whipped around my skirts. And there was a voice, a voice that whispered in my ear. And I knew, I knew what I had to do. I came down out of that mountain, and I went over to Lori Foster's house. She was packing away some of her things. So I asked real innocent like, I said, Lori, where are you going? And she said, well, I guess you haven't heard. Tom Dooley and I are going to run off and get married tonight. Well, I held my temper, and I said, now, Lori, I don't think that's such a good idea. And she said, well, I didn't think you would. Because you see, once Tommy and I are married, he's not going to have nothing to do with you. You old bitty, We're married to that old man. Well, I started to get tears in my eyes. And then I looked over, and there on the butcher block was a, a knife. I, I, I don't even remember picking it up. But I can still feel that cold steel against my hand. And I said, Lori, Lori, you got to understand. Tom Dooley has made a, a pact with the devil. And do you know what she did? She laughed. She laughed at me. And the next thing I know, Lori was lying there on the floor in a pool of blood. And that knife, that knife was in my hand. Lori was staring at me with them blue eyes of hers, not seeing me. Just then I heard the back door open and I dropped the knife. It was Tommy. He came over and put his arms around me and he said, Oh, Annie, Annie, what have you done? Don't you know? Don't you know you're my one true love? Now, he said, Annie, I don't want you to worry about a thing here. I want you to take Lori's body and roll her up in this rug, and I'll go get us a wagon. Well, Tommy left, and I, I started rolling her body up like he told me to. About half hour later, he come back with a wagon and a, and a shovel. And we took that wagon down the road a piece, and when we stopped, he went out in the woods and dug a nice hole. Then I, I helped him carry that rug out to that, out to that hole and we placed Lori down inside. 
We covered it over with some dirt and some sticks and some, some leaves. Nobody'd ever find it. Then he looked at me and he said, Now, Annie, Annie, you got to promise me you're not going to say nothing to nobody about this. And I locked that I wouldn't. Now, a couple days later, people started noticing that Lord was gone. And the sheriff started asking some questions, going around from person to person. And when he came to me, I, I told him I, I didn't know a thing. But you know, he was supposed, Tommy was supposed to run off with Lori that night. So of course, that's who they suspected. And so Tommy came up to me and he said, now Annie, I I'm gonna have to go across the state line into Tennessee for a while, but I'll call for you later when things cool down. And he left. But that sheriff, that sheriff wouldn't give up. He just kept asking and asking and finally he came up to this old farmer and he asked him if he had seen anything peculiar that night. And that farmer thought about it and he said, did he like that he did? He said, it was strange, he said. It was almost in the middle of the night. He said, I, I, I saw this rather tall-looking figure walking toward my barn. Now, that could have been that Tom Dooley fella you're talking about. Came and took my wagon and, and, and took my, my shovel. Well, I, I started following behind him for a while. Then he stopped, and I, I saw some woman come out of the house, and they, they had a, a big bag, and they, they placed it on the back of that wagon. Well, I figured I was going to go ahead and follow them a little bit further. But then they stopped, and I was afraid they might see me, so I, I turned myself around, and I went on back home. Now, the next morning when I woke up, there was my wagon, and there was my shovel, and I just figured, well, I must have dreamt the whole thing, and I never thought a thing about it. But maybe... Maybe that's that Tom Dooley fellow you've been talking about. So he, the sheriff asked him if he would take him down to that point where they had stopped that wagon. And the man liked that he would. And they took him down to that road and they got themselves some bloodhounds and a posse and before long, they found Laura Foster's body. And now there was a warrant for Tommy's arrest. They went right across that state line and they found him working there at that plantation and they brought him back to trial. Oh, he had the best lawyer, the best lawyer any person could ever ask for. But he wasn't good enough. But when Tommy got up there, he wouldn't even talk about me being part of what was going on that night. You see, Tommy loved me so. And he said it that he never killed Lori Foster, neither. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. You killed Lori Foster. Poor boy, you're bound to die. Now, I was in jail this whole time. You see, they knew that Tommy had an accomplice, and it must have been me. But at the end of the trial... And after Tommy's hanging, of course, they let me go because there wasn't, there wasn't any, any proof of anything. Now, I, I couldn't be there for Tommy's hanging, but I, I did hear from others that there were 3,000 people out there on Wilkes Mountain that day. 3,000, imagine that. All to watch Tommy get hanged. And he stood up there in front of everybody and he talked for about a whole hour, talking about the war, talking about his brothers and, and playing music, until finally they put that noose over his neck, and he said his last word. Now his sister was right there with a wagon with a, with a coffin, and when, when they cut him down, he just fell down into that coffin and they put the lid on it. Now I, I wasn't there, mind you, but I hear tell from people that were, that they could see Tommy sitting on top of that coffin with that fiddle under his arm, singing that song, that song that has gone on and on, that song that got it all wrong. And I just figured, 
after Tommy was gone, I didn't have it right. You see, Tommy wasn't asking for fame. He was asking for infamy. They should be singing that song about me. I was the one, I was the one who killed Lori Foster, Annie Foster Milton. Thank you.